Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. This is the mid-August garden tour. I was whispering because I decided to start. Let me switch my camera. I had it on auto and then I switched it to manual because there is a dragonfly sitting there. And I decided to start on this end and kind of really do a walkthrough because I've been working, things are changing, but I don't want to drag this thing out for an hour. You don't want to see it for an hour and neither do I. So I thought, because I want to get into the garden, I'm excited when the weather's so nice to get in here and do things. So let's start on this end and then we walk all the way through and we're literally going to do a walk. We're doing great. Everything is fine. It's been hot and dry. We haven't had any rain. They even predicted rain one day. We didn't get it. Not here. So things have been dry and that creates issues. Issues like animals. You got animals that are looking for food and boy are they attacking our garden. I don't have a gopher problem because of the totes but you do have birds and other things eating all the greens. But all in all, everything's doing good. That's a pomegranate tree that's growing here by the bathtub. We're slowly working on this. I should say Gary is. I'm bringing plants in here. And then there was tomato plants last year. I didn't plant any, but those still back there are also pomegranates. And then this is the chia seed. Not sure if it's on its way out or it just got too big or it doesn't like the really hot days. But all in all, it's kind of dipping down on the pond there. Then this is my black sugar cane. I finally got it out of the tote, put it in a bucket. And I think, yep, down in the corner there is a tiny little rosemary. Oh, there's a lizard. I put a little rosemary plant. I thought it would be really good because if it makes it, it will bush up really nice and it would give critters a place to hide. And guess what? We've got water! Gary put water, isn't that cool? And I heard there's fish in here. I actually haven't walked out here for two days. And boy, has it changed in two days. Look at how green it is. The last time I walked over here, it was clear. So now that he did that, I can get in there and start doing things. I think I'm gonna make some water features. Some of you have asked me, you know, the stuffed animal you made. Here's that, look at that. Here is the hummingbird. They said, take a stuffed animal and make it into a fountain. I might do that. Maybe I'll make something cool to sit in the middle. Hmm, we'll see. Okay, let's just, you know what? Let's walk over to the truck bed. I am starting to spot buckets in the truck bed. I've got tomatillos growing now really, really good. And these are massive, these leaves. They've been doing really good. And this is just in native soil. So it's fine and then all this I'm planning on taking it out. I might do some saving of seed. Don't really need it. Swiss char comes up here like a weed but I might save some seed and then butcher those down and use that in all my buckets because I'm going to line this with buckets. So all in all that's what my plans are. That's why I want to get into the garden and work and start getting this stuff done. I didn't even know there was a bird in front of me. The goldfinches are eating the lettuce seed. They're so desperate they're eating anything. Okay, I have not done anything in here. You go, but everything's growing. I know, isn't that amazing? I have done nothing in here. I do come through every couple days and hit it with water. So what do I have now? Oh, fruit beetle, you're gonna hear me running and screaming. I've got tomatillos, that's growing here. I don't want the fruit beetle bothering me. Then I've got tomatoes. Then I've got more tomatillos. That's celery. I've got to get the celery out. And then that is sow thistle. I've been leaving that for the birds. I haven't done anything in there. There's still nothing growing in there. I told you I would take you with me. There's just nothing. <laughs> the tomatoes have been doing fantastic. I come through here, I groom them because they look so bad. And then they grow back again. So what am I going to do? Leave them. More tomatoes here, midnight snacks. Again, they came up from seed. This would be an easy fix. There's too many plants in there. I would just have to thin out the plants and then they will grow really, really good. More tomatoes there. This I'm just gonna leave. Gary loves his poplo and I think there's a squash back there. No, nope, yep, it's growing. Oh yeah, we've got squash, look at that. So that's in a pot, so that's layered. See the pot back here? I just dragged the pot over here a while back and I've already gotten squash off of that. Now this would be an easy fix too. Just pull everything out and start over with lettuce. And get the styrofoam out because I had tried something which worked. See how it looks, it hasn't even changed. And I was gonna make it where it's lighter so you could lift it, just one. 
and it did work but I think I'll pull the styrofoam out and trash that and then I'll get some leaves and stuff from the garden and then here more tomatillos and since they're coming up on their own so well and these usually are purple I think I'm going to leave them as well I've got a pepper back here and then again this is all lettuce and I want to really get serious I haven't gotten serious on planting lettuce so that's what's going on the chair garden the trees I'm probably never going to get fruit off of this unless I graft them. These are just seedlings. I've talked about that a thousand times. Just stuff that grew out of my compost. They're apple trees. But I can always graft them or something at some point. I didn't want to compost them down, so I went ahead and planted them. And they're actually doing pretty good. And if I groom those, I'd probably even get them to do better. And then the nectarine, I got nectarines off of this. So I've eaten a couple that's it not much and that's the avocado tree all right let's continue walking which way do I want to go I could go there's different ways let's walk over here back here I still am getting squash a couple of them got attacked by squirrels really bad they ate the center of the plant out and I should have tooled it once I threw the tool there it was okay but it was too late and if I would have tooled it earlier I wouldn't have had the problem but the tomatoes are doing good I've got two sets of tomatoes you can see the midnight snacks over there I've got just the regular red ones that came up so I'm going to redo this and then I put another tote back there and then I'm going to get plants in there so all in all look at the tomatoes oh my gosh I made some plant food and I poured it on this tomato plant that was in there and it's massive I'm going to put some totes here I haven't dragged them over there yet and I'll probably remove some of the top I'm going to call it topsoil. It's not topsoil, but just soil on the top and I'll put that in totes. And then I'm going to sit a couple totes, totes in there. Probably a total of four. This is pretty much the way it's going to look, but it's not set up. It's definitely not set up. But it's, I'm kind of putting them in there and looking at them how I want them. This has been my favorite setup, not counting the chairs. This has been just phenomenal. If you have an issue on the bottom, like I do periodically with the rabbits, you put a piece of wire. Yes, I can put tool. I just have been so busy that I haven't put tool on this, but I've put tool on other things. But this has just been amazing. It retains water for me. So with the drought we've got going on, I don't have to worry. I don't even water it every day. A lot of times it's every other day, even with our heat every other day because the holes are up. So there's always going to be a layer of water. The bottom goes they have the holes on the side so they're leaching in the here and I could plant something in there I haven't done that yet and I probably will I have a lot of seeds I can throw out there they'll probably be hybrids of anything but it doesn't matter of squash then I've got the squash growing there and the squash is being watered by the blue tote and the red tote the tomato plants as you can see I layered it they're just in a flower pot remember they have holes on the bottom so they can send their roots into the tote Look how many. And we pick and pick and pick, and they grow and grow and grow. Isn't that amazing? And then these are tomatillos. They're coming up all over, and they're beautiful. And I've got cucumbers starting again. I just started planting some new cucumber plants down there. I put a couple of them in. There's another one there just inside. And the old plants are making a comeback. I am feeding them. I'm making my own plant food. So that could be, too, why they're making a comeback. But look at that. And what do I have growing in there? Tomatoes and cucumbers, walking onions. I know I'm going to forget something. Tomatillos, zucchini. I had peas. We ate all the peas. I took all the peas out. Um, and the watermelon. I've got a one watermelon. That was my first watermelon plant. And I thought it wasn't going to make it because I, I actually planted it too early. And it just kind of started growing and it was too skinny. I thought, nah, I've got to get more growing. And all of a sudden, it made a comeback from the base of the plant. So it's doing really, really good. Isn't that gorgeous? This is like a phenomenal setup. If you're lazy, you just water the top and it waters the bottoms because the holes, well, you can go watch the video. The holes are just, this is amazing. I, and I don't know what else to say. Now with here, I've been dragging, yes, I have been dragging these totes around. And I'm going to use some of the soil in there. I absolutely reuse my old soil. So I'm trying to figure out what goes where, and there's some of them will be going down here. For now, all of them are that's left. The big ones are lined up. I think I want them just the way they are. They're old, old totes, but I think this is going to be a good setup. And then if I want in the winter, if nothing's growing in there, I can move them around. Or very early spring, I'll have to see. And then this is the new setup that I am absolutely crazy about. You get more 
plants growing. You got a lot of them taking care of itself. I'm not sure if I'm going to put the bucket up on top yet or not. I'm just looking at it, but this is just unbelievable. You have to have the right totes to do this in. They have to be the industrial or extra heavy duty that is totally stackable. You could do it a little differently and you couldn't go higher, but I don't want to go any higher. But look at this. I was getting ready. I just planted some squash seeds in a new method that I start my seeds and I was going to bring them out and they're getting bigger. There are a whole bunch of them. I may go ahead and leave these. These are hybrids. Now when I say they're hybrids, I grew different types of zucchini, so they could be hybrids and I'm not sure what they'll end up looking like, but they're doing so well. This is out of my compost. So I might go ahead and leave these. I might actually move some of them. See them? They're popping up everywhere. Let me tell you something, and nobody talks about this. I have composted seeds where I've taken my kitchen scraps and put them on the bottom. And I have had the squash seeds wiggle their way up and have a six inch trunk. By the time they come up, you pull them out. And it's amazing how they will travel six inches to get to the top to survive. So it's still, when a seed wants to grow, it's gonna grow. Yeah, I'm gonna decide how I'm gonna do that. That's my plant food setup. We'll get into that real, real soon. And those are the papayas. And yes, I did have to get rid of that squash. That long squash with the long core, it was done. It was long done. So those small totes are gonna get moved down there, including that one that's sitting on the top there. And then those are gonna be left and I'm gonna see what I'm gonna plant in them. I can plant them in them right now or I can start setting up for Wow, winter, I was going to say, but I'll see. I'm not sure yet. I probably will get stuff in them right away. Eggplant, we're getting a ton of eggplant. I've got peppers I already just picked. We've got eggplant I keep picking. Oh, look, there's more here. It's just been full. I picked a whole bunch on the bottom the other day and cooked it. And then I've got, well, I've got the tree collards growing. I really don't want the tree collards here. I want that one, but I want to move some of these others. I think that's in a pot, which is, oh, yeah which is probably long left and gone into the tote. So a lot of this I'm gonna change. Let's keep walking. Look at the Malabar spinach. It is going up. It's going up in life. It's happy. Let's go up. I'm gonna clean up some of the determinant tomatoes like that one. And then what I'm gonna do is see if it's gonna make a comeback. Cause it's been, it came back last year and, and I grew more. It's the Goliath one. And again, I haven't done anything here. I've got sorrel. I don't like sorrel. I took a piece the other day. Gary eats it. Nah, I don't. I'm gonna keep it because I make a green drink that I know is really healthy, and I use it for that. But as far as cooking or eating it, it's just my not my cup of tea. So I'm gonna continue keeping it. But I just I'm not real big on sorrel unless I find a new way of doing something with it. I guess you can put it in the salad. I don't know. Celery uh, again. This is all lettuce seed. Like I said, I haven't done anything yet. Here's the problem. I've talked about it last time. I spread myself too thin. I know that. I've got all these gardens now, the chair garden, the wall, and I've been, you know, I planted on the wall. I'm working on here. And then here I do come through and groom because I want the leaves. The leaves are my soil and I need to get through and do this soil and get all the growth around it out. It's really hot. So things are going to look droop droopy right now because the sun is beating on me and it's beating on the plants. But I want to trim off a lot of the leaves that the plants don't need. Here's a big red tomato. See, this is a Goliath and it's a determinant. And then when you trim it, trim it up and clean it up, you, it just goes back to life and starts growing more. So it's over a year old, so we'll see how long it lasts. But I want to get rid of all the leaves I don't want because I've got to build up more flower pots and more totes. See, there's more stackable totes. There's one there, there's one there, and there's one there. So I've been debating how I'm going to do that because the determinate tomato is in that yellow pot. If I try to move the pot, I'll, I could break the roots and I could lose the entire tomato plant. I have done this before. Tomatoes, a lot of times, once they're established and that big, don't want to be moved. So the other way of doing it, since the tomato's on that side, is I could move the sorrel because it's not that important to me, and then take those two small totes. Now, these are small ones. I don't even know how big they are. I don't think they're that big. They're about, they're 15 gallons, and the ones I'm using further down that you saw in the video, those are 27 gallons. So they're, 
they're going to be kind of small. I like using bigger ones when I'm stacking, but it's still stackable. So I could theoretically move all this, leave that just where it is so I don't disturb the tomato. Or I could just move these two together and just stack one. Maybe I'll do that. Again, it's my garden. I can decide what I want. And that's it. I'm cleaning this up. I'm getting ready to put some lettuce in here. And then this way I can start my seedlings and move them anywhere I want. That's more plant food set up. Celery, this, this stuff has to be pulled out. Bucket of more celery has to be pulled out. I don't know what to do with this beautiful, beautiful avocado tree. It's just got the straightest, most beautiful trunk. It is so happy. And I am thinking of putting it in a pot or moving it maybe down by the bathtub somewhere. And if it makes it, it makes it. And if it makes it, I can try to graft it. I don't know. I want to set up that small one somewhere else and put a bigger tote here because it's such a small tote to put on the chair there and that's just tomato plants coming on their own and then you've got some probably tree collared or some sort of collared coming up and that's it you know I'll show you this real quick you know what this is this is a squirrel stash they went around picking up macadamia nuts they dug a hole in the rocks and those are macadamia nut trees. Gary's taken a lot and planted them around the yard. I don't know if we'll do anything with them, but that's how easy the trees come up. That's why the avocado tree is growing. And I've got carrot wood that falls that grows in my tote. So you've got trees growing everywhere. Same thing here. I want to change all this. And again, I'll see. It doesn't have to be all done at one time. I don't have to finish. You're never finished with the garden anyways. So I'm going to decide how I want to do this because say I can do so much more in here. Who knows? Maybe I'll stack the entire wall one day. Oh, no. I don't think I'll get that many black totes to stack. I don't need that much. So I'll see. Here is carrot seed. I've got to collect some of the carrot seed. There's they're just so beautiful and I know that there won't be quite as much as there should be in there because the goldfinches have been coming in. But I need to clean that up. I need to feed this tote. Maybe use some of my plant food and put that in there because I get the carrots out and get that eggplant growing better and I've got walking onions in there. So we'll see. And then here you saw me harvest all my potatoes, which I haven't put back yet. But all these tomatoes are coming up and everything's coming up and I didn't plant in this. This is just all volunteers and that's what a plant is called when they come up on their own and they're doing beautiful. Now this tomato plant died. See this tomato plant? When I picked the tomatoes out, it died. Now the reason it died is again, tomatoes don't like their roots messed with. So that finished that tomato plant. But as soon as that happened, a new tomato plant took over. It's like, oh, well, they're not there. I'm going to grow. Then I've got lettuce growing in there. See, I didn't plant it. It just fell in there because this is lettuce. And look at this. Isn't this interesting? Do you know what that is? That's a basil. Notice there's no other basil growing. You know why? Because the roly-polies eat baby basil plants. But I've got this cut container, food container that's cut, just sitting here and the roly-polies can't get to the basil at least not when it was tiny so it grew and there's also a tomato plant in there but see you can protect your baby seedlings with just a food, cut food container and that's why that basil's growing so I might just kind of leave it and see what I decide what I'm going to do there but isn't that amazing how nature does its own thing let's go into the front yard and see what's going on there Okay, give me a second. I got to get oh, my wrist strap off. This is just my regular Sony HX400. Okay, here we go. Lois March. This one's for you. You know who you are. Look at this. Let's dust this off. She's been messaging me. She's a subscriber. Over and over. And I thought, what is she talking about? Have you seen the heart? Have you seen the heart? Thinking... I don't know, but let's just amuse her <laughs> and say, I don't know. I didn't know what she was talking about. So I came out here after the last comment again that she commented a few times. It's, uh, that's a heart ring. It's actually a ring I found in a box and I put it on. It's even broke, but I like it because I like hearts. And I go out here and I look. And lo and behold, this lady's got a real sense of picking up things. She's right. The thing Gary built me has a heart on the corner. So I go back to Gary and I said, did you know there's a heart on the corner? And he goes, oh my gosh. He built this months earlier before he moved it. 
and he shaped the corner here where you sit into a heart. But with everything going on and trying to get things moved and working in the garden, he forgot. So he never told me and I didn't know and I didn't know what Lois was talking about. I thought, what is she talking about? And there it is. So congratulations. You saw the heart. Gary forgot about it. And there is the heart to this puzzle that Gary built me. In here right now, I've got the squash. I did have a squirrel get in there. I don't think it was the rabbits because I didn't see that. They don't seem to jump that much. I saw a squirrel in here and they took the centers out of my plants. Squash plants don't like that. So I'm probably going to pull this one out, even though it is trying to make a comeback, see? And it might work. See what they did? They chewed the center out. So this one I trimmed yesterday back. I think there's already fruit on there. And I'm collecting leaves, so I'm gonna make soil. And I don't worry if there's powdery mildew. Once it's dried up, the powdery mildew's gone. But my goodness, almost overnight, all that new growth is coming in beautiful. And then here, see, like I said, I might take that one out, is another plant. I've gotta get in here and get rid of more. I don't think it has a lot of powdery mildew in there. I want to clean this up. There's too much in here, really. And then here, there's no squash plant in here. It's the tomatoes. I had a hornworm that got in there, and look at that. He ate a whole bunch of this stuff up. But look at the tomatoes. Remember the tomatoes I grew that were, well, I collected the seeds from the sun golds? Well, that's what they turned into. A little bit bigger than a regular sun gold. Look, it's got a little bit of a hint of darkness, probably from the midnight snack or the uh, Bradley but see it hybridized but you know what they're really good so that's what these are they're, they're hybrids but look at that we've been picking them so there's not that many Gary comes through here and picks and picks and I pick and pick so I've got two tomatoes growing in here I've got the red ones which are I think they're called delicious I've got one of those and then the sun gold seeds that I planted because it hybridized doesn't matter to me as long as it tastes good and then what else is going on here we've still got the isn't that pretty? The finger lime, it's really full of flowers. It's so pretty. I've been feeding this too. There's another feeding station. I used to do one and then I'm running around trying to feed all my plants. And this is not what it looks like. So I will have to explain it. But boy, why don't I just set them up all over and I've got them where I need them. And then I can process it the way I want. And there's no work. Again, gardening easy. So now I'm feeding all the plants, but I started feeding this one and it just bursted into flower again. It's got little fruit. So it's doing really good. I haven't done anything in here. Nothing else. Tree collared. Here I've got some sweet potato. My daughter brought me a sweet potato plant. I'm keeping that covered so the rabbit won't get it until I get some tool around here. Isn't that funny how they pick and choose? Now this one got moved. This one was on the end tote that I moved where I've got my new setup. I figured I don't need a black tote on the corner. And these are all stackable. So I pulled it out and it looked like it was dead. But it has popped back. And it's interesting that the rabbit hasn't touched that one. See what the rabbit did on these? Chewed that one, but not that one. But all I really need to do, and I really have to get out here and do it, is just string one layer of tool all the way around even low enough for me to just bend over and that will solve all these issues. I was so close to moving all these and I don't know if it's worth it moving it or just getting a few more totes when I'm ready because you can catch them when they're $10. I think Home Depot and Moles has these stackable ones. These are all 27 gallons. They're the industrial and they're stackable. Or I could pull them apart or maybe eliminate one and stack here, but I don't know if I really want to stack. It's really hard to grow under this, these massive pine trees. So I might just, I don't know, it's my garden. I can decide. And then these are the chairs. Gary just sat these chairs here. Isn't that cute? He got them in the trash. And they're nice. All right, what else is back here? Nothing. Here's my tomatoes. Oh, this has been the most prolific thing. We keep picking and it just keeps, uh oh. I see traces of a hornworm. I don't know, but you know what? I don't see the hornworm. When the Orioles come through here, I've got to get some branches in here, tree branches. They will hang out on a tree branch and they will pick the hornworms out themselves. They don't like landing on the tomatoes because of the trichomes. It's sticky and they can't really wash it off. But if you give them places to land, then they'll sit here and they're amazing to watch and then they'll just dive. 
after the hornworm and then they'll take off with it. And they'll take them really big. They don't care what size they are. So I'll see, but this has just been amazing in this trough here. And this is again a volunteer that came up and I love the volunteers. They grow the best. That's why I'm thinking of leaving those squash because when they come up on their own, I have always found that they're the best. Yes, I moved that flower pot. I had that big flower pot I got in the trash. I changed my mind. I have enough here and I'm gonna leave it the way it is and just work with what's here. So we'll see, I'm almost done in here. It's, you're never done. You turn around, you go, ah, I thought of something else, walking onions. This has been great. You saw me do the video on this. This was another layer of green just draped over the, over the black. Did the trick, kept the rabbits out. It got torn and they found the hole. The rabbits will not make a hole, but if they find a hole that you snagged or something and it's big enough and it, they can get around it, then they'll get around it. Well, now everything's growing back. So that's really, really good. The back side of this redwood table that's falling apart. I put some cuttings in there. They look dead. They probably are. Why? Because you don't take fresh cuttings and put them in direct sunlight. But it didn't matter to me. I just had them. I was trimming. I stuck them in there. So that is the way not to do it. So don't do as I say, not as I do. And oh, onion seeds. I got to collect some onion seeds. Isn't that cool? So I've got garlic chives. I've got walking onions in there. I've got regular onions from last year. Those are onions I left over winter and I didn't pick them and they went to seed. So I want to collect the onion seeds there. I've got red bean sorrel in there too. I've got mint on the bottom. And these are just a succulent that was there when we bought the house. Okay. Over here, oh, I got to get my turmeric out. I have a new way of growing turmeric. I'm going to have more turmeric and more ginger than I know what to do with, which is great. That's a really good thing to do. I'm setting them up. See the bottom? See, that's what I put on the bottom. Look at that. More is coming up. More ginger is coming up. Oh my gosh, I grow it in a new way that it's just going to produce so much. This is my ginger, turmeric, stevia table. The stevia is in the back. You're going, there's not as much. I know, I gave my daughter a big tub because I have it growing now on the deck. I, you can just root it so easy. So I've got enough stevia. And then here, in the new fashion in which I grow turmeric. Look at all the baby turmeric coming up. Isn't that cool? So all my turmeric and ginger is doing really good. No complaints on that. And we'll get into more on turmeric and ginger and you can plant it anytime. You, you can go to the store if you can get some that have not been irradiated. You know, it'll grow. You can, so we'll have to get into it because the way I do it is amazing i wanted to make sure it worked and it works fantastic let's go into the bird garden that i have not been really working on but i have been doing a little bit i'm starting to kind of map out in my head how i want it and like i said there's no hurry everything you see all through here is food what can i not eat i don't eat geraniums but pretty much everything is food so if i need greens i've got the greens I don't have, I think there's one tomato plant down there. I've got papayas, but it's mainly greens in here. And then you got the fig trees back there and lemon verbena and lemon balm and mints and stuff. So let's see. Oh, dragon fruit. Gary's going to be so busy. Look at this. Look at all the dragon fruit. I know Gary's got some going in his garden. He said he's got a ton of them. And then we've got a ton of them here. They go all the way down the wall. They're all through here. I don't know if I can lean over that easy without getting stuck. I can't believe how many we've had. We, This is unbelievable how many dragon fruit we've got in here. I really water these plants good. He's gonna be so busy because once they open, look at this, they're coming through. When they open, he has to hand pollinate them all. And we did get quite a bit of fruit last year, but this year we're going to get literally a ton of fruit, which is gonna be fantastic because there's nothing better than dragon fruit. I never even knew what it was until he started getting into all this. Look at that. So you've gotta be careful here because it winds around. That's why I wanted it out of my garden. And I'd be working in here and get stuck by that. So let me back up because I don't want to trip on all these pots that is what's going on and it winds all over i've got a plant in my garden that was really short oh a few years ago quite a few years ago i planted it and for the first year it didn't do much and then bam it just took off but this year it's just taken off like mad i can't even remember if i gave it any of my plant food or not that it makes see there's another plant food station so 
I'm going to have to kind of keep track of that, but this is, I guess it's just the weather. It must love the weather because Gary's got it in his yard, but right there, there's already, just in this one spot, is about a dozen, and then we've got it all through there, past the lemon verbena. Then we've got another one on the other side of the wall that's growing. That's amazing. Okay, going in here, I've got a new bay here, and you can see it went up, 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 and I put some more, let's see, that's rebar, but then I've also got tomato steaks attached to it. I felt bad for it. And then Gary said, no, it falls down on itself and goes back up. I said, yeah, but it wanted to go up so bad. So <laughs> I don't know, but it's going to go up and up and up. And then what? So anyways, it is falling back. But I've got two ubes that he had in the garage. And I thought, you know, I'm going to grab a couple of them. So I put two there. So there's one there. And then there's one there. And then I've got my watermelon. I put this trash can thing. I can take this off right now. Look at that. More squash. Let me take this off. All right, let's move that. I put that there because something was chewing on my plant and I really want the watermelon. That's what I planted here, sugar baby watermelons. I want them to take off. I did not plant any squash. Yes, there's squash because it comes up in my way. I compost in place and it's not broke down. So there's seeds in there and the seeds want to grow. And then of course, look at that covered by this because those are papayas coming up all through there. There's another one. When you cover it with something, isn't this cool? This a little tool on top. Then the baby papayas don't get eaten by roly polies or stuff, but there's so many, there's tons of papaya in here. Same thing with the squash. I covered a few of them. I didn't plant them because I don't know what they're gonna be. I'm hoping though they're doing so well that, you know what, this is gonna be a zucchini. Why, or a type of zucchini? Because it doesn't have the runners. As soon as you see the little strands coming out that twist around and the tendrils, then you know it's going to be something different. But if it doesn't grow that because zucchini doesn't get tendrils, then you know it's going to be more on the zucchini side. See, watermelon gets tendrils, so do spaghetti squash, so do other squash, so does um, delicata gets tendrils. But I like zucchini, they don't get tendrils, so that's a keeper actually. So we'll see what happens with all that. And then this you don't want. You don't want this. See how far down that seed was? You know what that is? It's a palm tree. It's way up there. It drops the tiny little seeds and then they grow everywhere. So you want to pop those out. This here is celery that looks brown. I do not save the seeds. That's celery seed. Though I should because the seed itself is a spice. It's an herb. And you can use that for cooking because I have so much. But I tend to just chop up celery and put it into things because I like using the leaves. Not only are the leaves more nutritious than the stock, but it has strong flavor. So if you want a celery flavor, you use the green leaves. All right, so let's keep going through here. So I've got all the walking onions and I've, then I've got, this is still small, but the reason the dinosaur kale is so small is it's so hot. Remember, a lot of your greens do not like the heat. It also did finish seeding. And when it grows seeds, they have their leaves really small. But as soon as the weather changes in a few months, you see, we're hot all through August. We're hot all through September. And I always remember that Halloween at the end of October is when our weather really changes. So we've got almost three months of hot weather, unless we have a hot winter, which has happened before. So we'll have to see what happens with that. But as soon as the weather starts to cool and it gets cooler at night, then the leaves will get bigger. I'm still going to trim a lot of this out. There's these totes. I don't even do anything with them. The mushroom plant's been there for years, years and years. All these plants have been here for years. This was a tiny little plant when I planted it in, the lemon for bean. I keep trimming it back. So really, I haven't done anything in here. Here's the old, let's see, this one is a dazzling blue kale that's been in there for years. All this stuff's been in here for years. So I'm really not doing that much. I dragged this in here. I had plants. What I was going to do, and I think I've changed my plans again, was it's so broken. I was going to put mint in there, and I was going to have mint growing out of it, too. And I thought it would look really cool. But now I'm looking at it and thinking, I may put it back there and put my rose bush in there and have it growing that way. And I really don't want to mix mint in. Mint is good but it has such a massive root system that it may choke out the roses. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna put there. I might just leave it and turn it and 
I don't know because you can't put too much sticking out. I could figure out something or not do not stick out anything at all and just put a rose bush in there. And I want to clean all this up. I'm putting purple tree colored. I'm getting more and more of the tree colored out. I've got another one in a pot there. And that I would like to line the back. I think it would look really cool. And then trim back what like it's a jungle. Trim it back a little bit, but not too much. Because this is where all the birds come in. We have over 50 species of birds that come through here. They feed here, they drink here, they bathe here, they nest here. We have more species than I even thought we had. And this is not counting any hawks. No bird of prey. Just the small birds. We have so many. And think of the ones I haven't seen because I'm not out here all the time. See this? This is millet. The birds will eat it. It's coming out of the bird seed. Is it millet? Well, they ate it all. It could be canary seed, but it looks like millet. I want to get all this out. Look at this. I actually like that. That's probably a seedling, a cross between some sort of collard. So kale, collard. So I'm going to do something with that. But I'm going to clean all this up and then put nicer water features in. They're all hidden. Look at under the mint. I've got that one. And then I've got the, the one electric one there, and i got to get water in the rock one. Or maybe it's in the shade right now, the solar panels, because some of them are in the shade, and then it goes into the sun. So it's kind of like on, off, on, off, which ones are working. There's the candlestick. And even in these dog kennels that we've got, these white things are dog kennels, I want to put buckets, I think, in there. There's already soil in there, but instead of trying to do anything with the soil that's in there. I just put a bucket with leaves and stuff and just sit it on top and let nature do its thing. They fix the soil for me. And there's the bowl that I can't see because it's so overgrown. So I'm going to change a little bit in here. I'm not quite ready to go here, but I am starting to bring buckets and things in here and think about it. Here's my lemon balm that I split early on. I think I did it early this year. It was one little plant. It got really big. Just split it and see it's in a pot because there is not enough soil in here. But that's been doing really, really well. Mint in that old tote too. And then this is just, like I said, it's a jungle. I really want to cater to this. This is really cool. This is a hybrid of some sort. It could be a triple hybrid. So it might have been a collared cross different kales because it will get a purple vein kind of through in the winter. And then the leaves get really round and dark green blue. They're beautiful. That, the only way to duplicate that is cutting. So I'm starting to take cuttings from that. All this has to be trimmed out. See, and then one of my collards, there's an old tree collard, it died back. Probably from the rabbits that dug the roots out that got in here, see, and they probably dug the roots out. And it's okay, I'm gonna get rid of this, clean all this up and put something else back there. So that's all right there. And then I've got garlic chives back there. And solar pa panels not facing the right way. Onions. This is the original tree collard. That's the one that was here that used to be like 15 feet tall and it finally died back. I don't know what killed it, but maybe just age. It was old. But I took a couple cuttings that day off and I thought they were really rotten looking. This one lived and that one lived. So I've got two off the original. That is a cutting off the other plant. So I'm starting to do cuttings and I've got more purple tree colors back here. That one kind of fell over. Instead of trying to force that purple tree colored up, I'm just going to do cuttings and start lining it and hopefully remember to take care of it so I can get it exactly the way I want. Again, I'm probably moot. I was looking for a bird stand. Okay, I asked Gary the other day, do we have another bird stand, an old bird stand? And he said, I don't think so. I don't need this here. I can switch this around. I've got thoughts of how I want to set up down there. And then here I would like to put chairs. I've got so many chairs that we found in the trash and get totes off the ground. So if the rabbits get in, he wired them out. But here's the thing. They can pop around the bottom there and come right in so they can come in when they want. So I want to change all this. But again, there's no hurry. I can say, let's call it a three-year plan. You know, whatever happens, happens. And I'll just work and go as I go because I always change my mind too. Haven't done anything here. So what is this? This is my plant soil. So I take all those brown and green leaves, rip them off, and then I make my own soil from them. But I do want to change a lot of this around because this is where Gary's growing some stuff. I can see it. We can take a quick, quick, quick. So I haven't been in here, so I don't know what's in there. Look at that. Oh, that's, I don't know what he's growing in there. This looks like sweet potato. 
but that's not. That might be his cucumbers. He told me he's got some cucumbers growing. That might, I'll have to ask him. I don't know. There's not much going on in there at all. And then here, like I said, I, I'm going, this is all soil. When I fill a bucket or a tote, branches and all this go on the bottom, mixed with some green leaves. So I haven't done anything here. It's not like I need to. Like I said, everything you see in here, though it's hot and dry, it may not look that great here, we have had no rain, and then we've been constantly in the 90s, and sometimes we go to over 100. So we just do what we have to do, and that's it. Then, of course, the papayas are doing okay in the tote. You do not grow papayas in a tote. The papaya said, we don't grow in a tote either. We're leaving. No, and we're leaving it. Gary made holes on the bottom so those massive roots can come out. Oh, a while ago. And this has worked out really good. All right, let's step out. We've got... Let's see, I've got more Malabar spinach that's coming up. And this is tomatoes, which I really should just trim. I want to clear all this out. That's some Moringa that's coming up. We've got two Moringas, and I've got some cuttings in uh, hibiscus that I got from my daughter, and that's in the black pot. And I think some of them are doing pretty good. I really should have taken care of them and not left them in direct sunlight. But look, they're growing. I just, oh, they're all growing. I think, okay, that's, look at that. Oh, they're all growing. Okay, so whatever I did wrong, I did right. Because I would normally not put it in direct sunlight, but they're growing. So I want to get that growing in the garden. All right, let's step out and see what's going on out there. There's my rosemary. Love my rosemary. I think that would look fantastic by the bathtub. So that's why I want to get, I did that cutting, and I want to get some rosemary growing. And that's it. Uh, strawberries have been doing fantastic. We just walk around and we pick strawberries as we feel like eating them. This is garlic. I should have picked it, but there's garlic in there and I'm just storing it. I can pick them anytime I want or I can leave them and they'll regrow in the fall when, it, when the weather cools. So it's no hurry. And here I did tool it. See? Because Gary said something is eating. It's the rabbit that lives here. Something is eating your potato mint. So I put a little bit of tool around. And I threw some leaves in there. See that? And now the leaves are growing. I was going to move part of this potato mint because there was only like there were six pieces or seven pieces and it got so massive. But now I'm just taking cuttings or leaves and throwing it in there and it's starting to grow. So I'm just going to leave it. But the tool does work. Kept the rabbit out. They don't like the feel of the tool. Even here, I haven't done anything in here. So I've got to fix that up at some point. This is the strawberries. This is, I just picked a big squash off of this. I don't know if, oh... There's another squash in there. Um, and that's too yellow. I forgot about it. Got tomatoes growing and squash. You really don't want to put tomatoes and squash in the same exact tote. You can lift it and give the tomatoes a little bit of their own. But together, they fight over nutrients because they're both such strong eaters. This is the water that's making the noise. It's just a bucket with one of these things you get from the nursery for free. And then it's just the cement block I made. Isn't that a leaf pattern? Isn't that beautiful? And then there's a solar fountain pump in there. And then here's the panel. Does it sing in the shade? Okay, and then I've got some beets, but I've been pulling them out. They're pretty much done. Oh, look, see, got a little beet. And then I've got the broccoli, which, you know, I give that to Kitty. I should bring her in some. I don't have her out here right now because it's so hot. She does not like the heat. I'll pick her a couple. Because when I give her one, it's like, don't you have more? She likes it fried in butter. Yeah, who doesn't? Okay, and then I've got, now this is nice. This is a Korean melon. This is where the black sugar cane was. So I pulled that out. I literally, no joke, took a knife, cut it, and pulled it out. And now that is way down there by the bathtub. And that is its new home. But this, I've got the broccoli. This doesn't need to be here. This is lettuce that's in a blue bucket that can be lifted out. But I wanna get the Korean melons going cause those are really nice. And they tend to have a lot of melons later when it, they really like a lot of heat. So we should start getting melons later, like September, October. I've even looked at past videos where we're picking melons in November. This is the cuttings I did in Gary's yard, a pepino. So that's pepino. And I may take this squash plant out because I've got a whole bunch more. Oh, there's a cutting of a dinosaur kale. I put in there and I may put a new one somewhere else and maybe I'll just cater to the pepinos and leave them and let them do their thing and then leave the pepper. This is a black cobra pepper that came up from seed 
in the driveway and now it is flowering and it's got peppers already. Oh, cool. I'm like, and there's, hopefully that's not growing in there. No, it just wound around. I think it's gonna be okay, but looks like it's bothering the pepper. I'll take it out. Watermelon, look, 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 I've got flowers. Let's see, this is a male watermelon flower. Do I have any females? I think that's a female. Let me see, I'm trying to get you in there. Yep, see the baby watermelon? That's a female watermelon. And see the ant? Hopefully she is pollinating and doing her thing. Even the ants are good. They'll pollinate, they'll go and they collect pollen and stuff, and they'll go from flower to flower and they pollinate. So if the bees don't do it, they do it. And then this is just mustard. And here I want to put another compost in place in the center. More mustard because there are four watermelon plants in there. Four is too many, but I think I have a method and I think I can push it. More plant food. And that's the plant food again that I make. Then I've got celery, celery growing in here. I've got a bucket. Oh, this is just the lettuce. I had buckets of lettuce growing. And then the onions. That probably is walking onions. In here I've got an asparagus plant. So I don't know how that's going to be. But you saw me bring it over there. I've got more broccoli. That's all broccoli. Somebody said, you don't have enough broccoli. I've got broccoli now. Broccoli everywhere. This I can throw away. Actually, I'm not, you don't throw away anything. This, I think, is also mustard. It could be bok choy. I had bok choy here, too. But this I'm going to compost. This I'm going to compost. It looks like it's too far gone. I would have had a whole lot of tomatoes here had I not left 100 plants there. This is no joke. There was 100 plants here. But you know what? I come out here and I pick tomatoes. I didn't move them. They came up, the seedlings. I got more broccoli back here. See? I can walk around the other side. More broccoli. Look at these tomatoes. Isn't that gorgeous? Look, look at this. Look, look, look. I think those might be what's called delicious because I did plant some in there. But see here, I've got broccoli here, and I've got to get, I got to stop the seeds. If I don't stop the seeds and trim them off, then the plant won't do good. So look at this. There were, no joke, a hundred, no joke, a hundred tomatoes. There were over a hundred, I counted them. I put this in here now, and there's leaves in there, and I water inside the coffee container. There's holes on the bottom of the coffee container. Just a few holes so it slowly leaches out and it has to go through the rotting leaves so it's constantly feeding them. But let me tell you, that is too much. You never want to have that many tomatoes. I did it for multiple reasons. Let's see, I did it for an experiment. I actually did. I wanted to see how it was going to do and then the squash plant is done because the tomatoes have pulled everything from the squash plant. So this will have to get composted. I did want to see how it would do, and it did okay. See, I've got tomatoes all through there. It's packed with tomatoes, and it keeps producing tomatoes. But this is, and more flowers keep coming. This is not the way to do it. But it will work if you feed it. So I had a container in there with rotting leaves, but you don't, there's no reason to have 100 tomato plants in one tote. So take it from me. You don't need to do it. And then this too. I did the video on my nursery. Oh, the nursery was fantastic. It was the nursery person that was taking care of it that wasn't me. I needed to get those out, and I didn't get them out. So it's like, oh, I'm thinking of putting some of them on, in there, maybe in pots where the squash is growing, maybe on the top. Maybe I'll put some in a bucket, but what is that going to get? One plant out of here? I might put a couple of the tomatoes there, or I might put the tomatoes all along there. If I start popping in tomatoes all along there and maybe some other plants in there, I'll have tomatoes all winter because this gets sunlight all the time, even in the winter. It will get a massive amount of sunlight. So, and the wall stays warm, so the tomatoes will do really good. I met a guy that lives up in Big Bear that was growing tomatoes in December. I said, how are you growing tomatoes in December? It's snowing because he had them up against the wall of his house and he draped some plastic down so he created a greenhouse and he was growing in Big Bear in the snow tomatoes up against his house by simply draping a piece of plastic and growing it up against the house. Well, wall will do the same thing. So all in all, I will remove some of the tomatoes. Obviously, I won't be re removing these because it will probably kill the plant doing it. I'll leave the red roselle. Gary likes eating it. I don't know. I don't eat it, but you make tea out of it. And then my pizza garden. I haven't even done anything. Look, I'm still moving totes around and stuff. Yes, things are growing in here. 
guess what? There's no holes in there. I didn't put holes in it yet because I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the tote. Gonna work on my buckets probably over winter. No hurry on that. I still have to get that other system set up. Basil. It's flowering beautiful for the hummingbirds and for the bees. Gonna get that set up and then start to set that up little by little. No hurry on that, but I do want to get that set up. But going back to the pizza garden, this has been phenomenal. That's why I really like stacking. This has been so great. It is loaded with peppers, loaded with tomatoes constantly. I've got sage. I've got two types of basil growing, the purple, which is right there, and the green. I've got rosemary in pots now. I separated them. They were in a little paper cup. So I've got rosemary there, but it's in a pot in a new way in which I grow things. And we'll talk about that later on. And I've got another one there. It will be easy, easy to move. And then I've got the tomatoes. I've got thyme. Please tell me I have thyme. Yep, I've got thyme. I've got garlic chives growing in there. I've got walking onions growing in there. Here's another sage. I've so the tricolored sage, not just the plain sage. Look at the peppers. Is this gorgeous? I mean, I can't say anything better than I'm just flabbergasted. It's warm against the house. It doesn't have the sunlight yet because I'm trying to do this early because it's hot. But the thing is, this should just grow all winter long. If you can find a place that stays warm, you can grow tomatoes and peppers. Now, if you're under two feet, three feet of snow, I don't know, but the guy did it in Big Bear. But for me, I know that if it's warm, we can just keep growing. And I absolutely love these. And I want to collect the seeds and I want to get more peppers growing. These are the seeds I told you when I dumped them in there. I knew it wasn't going to be hot. Better not be hot. No, we've eaten some. They're not hot. They are probably, I had red Italian peppers growing. I had mini bells growing. It could have hybridized and made its own pepper. But regardless, I wanted something for my pizza that I could chop up and put on there and not be hot like the black cobras that are really hot. And when they're red, they're even hotter because the black cobra peppers, when they're black, are not ripe. But when they're red, they're hotter. So keep that in mind. But this is not, this has just been beautiful. So that's it. So now you've gotten the garden tour. That was 20 minutes. Ha ha. I thought it was going to be. And I'm very pleased with everything. Let's see. Any disappointments in the garden? No, I'm not going to say I'm disappointed. But I think when I started all this and I said, oh, I'm going to do the wall. I'm going to do that. I'm going to do all that. And I realized it doesn't take a day. It's like, oh, I'll just go get it done. Because I'm doing all this myself. Occasionally, I might ask Gary to drill a hole for me only because I'm trying to do something else and he's out there drilling something for himself. So he might drill some holes if I don't want to pull the soldering iron out. I moved the totes myself. I dragged them out. I took some of the soil out. I left some of the soil. And I did that. I, I, this is all mine. And he made it real clear to me that his garden, because he works, and we work, I can't take on any more than what I've got, he said. You know, he wants, an, he wants it easy. Well, you say easy, but you know what I mean. And so he says, anything you do is your project. And I said, no, I know. So what I should have said was, I'm going to do the chair garden, the wall. I'm doing vertical gardening now. And I should have said, I've got a two-year plan. But instead, I said, I'll have it all done next week. It doesn't work that way. But you know what? It's better because I change things up. And I, it's much easier to change your big things up before you do it than after you do it. And plus, I'm kind of going through and deciding how I want to grow things. So am I pleased with my garden? I am absolutely pleased with my garden. I've been getting everything I need. We really don't buy produce unless it's for an animal that maybe we don't grow enough and we need something. But for us, we don't buy any produce for us at all. We are growing everything we need and I give some of it away. And so it works out really, really well. Tomatoes, we have more tomatoes than we need. And I love freezing tomatoes. So that works out perfect. Easiest thing to freeze, especially the small ones easiest thing to freeze and then when you take them out they're just so fantastic so i am very very pleased with everything i think totes have been the greatest thing i came up with that started to grow in i know that gary wanted in the beginning oh we've got to grow in the ground and he brought in the wood chips and we could do it all in the ground well he can but i'm still dealing with gophers i'm dealing with tree roots 
I'm dealing with rabbits. I'm dealing with all this stuff. And with totes, I can get them off the ground to get rid of the rabbits. If the squirrels start bothering it, I can put a little tool around it. I have much more control in container gardening than I ever will. Look at the watermelon. Than I ever, ever will. Whoops. On the ground. So I am, you know, I, I have gophers. Can't get rid of the gophers. My neighbor told me he can't grow anything because he's got gophers. Now he's growing a ton of stuff in totes. And as far as stacking them, as long as you do it right, you get the right one, you can stack them and get the greatest amount of food, whether it's buckets or whether it's totes. And so I am pleased with my garden. I just, the only thing I should have said is, this is what I'm going to do. And however long it takes me, it takes me. And that's all. Otherwise, I'm perfectly fine with it. I'm really, really happy with it. And then you go around and you change it up. A lot of this is going to be changed up. A lot of this zucchini is done. So I left them on too long. And when you leave them on, your plant says it's done. It goes you know, on its way out. So I'm going to designate which ones I want to grow zucchini. Maybe I'll put another zucchini in here. Get rid of the beets that are in here. Freshen it up. When I say freshen it up, just add in some more leaves to the top. Maybe dump in another container kitchen scraps, whatever I've got. And then just put some native soil on the top. And get another zucchini. Like I said, I just started a bunch of seeds. So I'm going to have to find a place for it. But all in all, I'm really, really happy. I'm so glad that you are coming with me on this journey. And I'm so, so glad that so many of you come back and say you stopped gardening. You're in your 70s. You're in your 80s. It was too hard. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, my gosh, this works. And there's no work. There isn't any work. The totes. Okay, this is getting off the garden tour. But the thing is with totes, they're great for too much rain as well as not enough rain. So we're going to cut it here, or I'm going to be talking for another hour, all on the totes, because I'm so excited with them, and I absolutely love them, and you know that. So with that, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow, and I better run in and give Kitty her broccoli, because I know she's waiting. She likes coming out, but she gets so hot when it's this hot, and I don't like having her out in the sun that long, because she will go lay out in the sun and not realize, ooh, I'm hot. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody.